All right, let's bring in Omar Samad for more analysis. He's a former Afghan diplomat and joins us uh, from Washington, D.C. Omar, good to have you on the show. Um, you are a senior advisor to Dr. Abdullah Abdullah. Uh, he's just met with uh, the Taliban's political office as well as the, uh, the negotiation team. Uh, what was discussed? Well, uh, I used to be, uh, but uh, I am keeping in touch with what is happening in Kabul. Uh, at this point, uh, there are a few issues that have been brought up by the Taliban with uh, individuals, politicians, uh, such as Dr. Abdullah and ex-President Karzai and others. Uh, one of those issues has to do with uh, security and safety uh, and protection of uh, uh, private properties in Kabul. Uh, the Taliban would like this leadership uh, that has a lot of experience, of course, with Afghanistan to convey that message to the population and the public at large. At the same time, uh, they uh, also are uh, talking to different constituencies in Afghanistan who may have issues or concerns. Uh, and so this is a, an interesting dynamic of the Taliban, uh, not only talking directly to the public, but also through uh, these intermediaries. Uh, and the third uh, issue that will come up now, the most important, is uh, our political talks. We do not know yet uh, to what extent the Taliban are amenable to uh, political inclus inclusivity and the next government that will be formed in the next couple of weeks or so, uh, if uh, talks go according to the wishes of many, it, it should be a broad-based government representing broad constituencies as well as technocrats who can take care of governance in Afghanistan. Let's talk about that political structure because officials from the Taliban have said uh, that the group uh, plan to, to, to ready a new model for governing Afghanistan within the next few weeks. We're seeing statements that, um, as you said, that the new government structure um, would not be a democracy uh, as defined by sort of Western standards, but it would uh, protect everyone's rights. Um, what do you think this will be looking like? I think that we are going to have discussions in two stages. I think that in stage one, there's going to be uh, <clears throat> a sort of a priority attention given to immediate governance issues. Uh, it could uh, be the formation of an interim transitional government, uh, a bureaucratic type government uh, that uh, would need to take care of the immediate needs of the country. The issues that have to do with longer term, deeper discussions uh, about democracy, what kind of democracy, rights, what kind of rights, uh, what, how do the Taliban define these issues and how uh, uh, the others uh, will react to it and how they can come to terms on some um, uh, agreements about uh, uh, any of these uh, concerns, things that have to do with the constitution, let's say, a lot of the laws that the country would need to have. The Taliban, obviously, are basing everything on Sharia. Uh, Sharia has always been a cornerstone of Afghan laws and the Constitution as well. Uh, so that will take a much longer discussion, in my opinion, uh, maybe months or weeks or months, uh, and would need, uh, obviously, a broader range of uh, participants to represent as many communities as possible. Um, and finally, uh, you know, we're playing pictures as you speak, uh, showing uh, pictures of the, the, the chaotic uh, evacuation uh, at Kabul's main international airport. Uh, the Pentagon has come out and said that there is a, a significant threat uh, by Daesh. Uh, evaluate this uh, security threat for us. How serious is it? Yeah, it, it can be serious. Uh, there are a couple of issues to, to, to be concerned here. First of all, uh, when the Taliban entered Kabul and other provinces, one of uh, their decisions was to release as many prisoners as possible, or all prisoners in some cases. Uh, so the doors were opened. We don't know exactly if all doors were opened. So for, for example, if there were prisoners released from Bagram Air Base, uh, where some Daesh people were being held. Uh, and if that is the case, then obviously uh, there is a security threat in the country where some uh, uh, Al-Qaeda or Daesh or other terrorist organization members may be, uh, uh, may be roaming across the country. That's one issue. The other issue has to do with uh, the fact that uh, Daesh uh, can also be a spoiler, not only a spoiler to make the, the whole situation look more dramatic and more chaotic uh, for the Americans, a threat for the Americans who want this affair to be done uh, as uh, uh, in an organized manner, but also to, for the Taliban as well, because 
Daesh and the Taliban are adversary, and they do not like each other, and they have fought each other in the past. So the, a Daesh uh, attack would also make the Talib Taliban look bad. Omar Samad, a pleasure as always. Uh, thank you very much for joining us.